So hello everyone and welcome to this session. Uh, we are going to introduce you to you a new Databricks feature that recently has been released is called repository, repository or repo, which is just a remote Git integration, which will, with this will make easier to implement development with the best practices. For the moment, Databricks supports integration with the GitHub, Bitbucket and GitLab. So, but of course, also with DevOps, because there is a cooperation with Azure as well to make it easy to work within the same environment. So this feature will make it easier or more the development within the team collaboration. I remember back at the times when data science project where you need to use Jupyter notebooks to build our models to do some statistical analysis. But linking this to the uh, repositories, it was quite hard because Jupyter notebooks by itself, they have kind of R just as JSON type in the background. So whenever you print some statements, even though you didn't change the code at all, you're just printing some new statements, this will uh, reflect as a new change in the notebook. And uh, while pushing and pulling from the database, database, this might bring a lot of conflicts. When you push and pull from your repository, Jupyter notebooks, this is, will bring a lot of conflicts while co collaborating with your team. So therefore, Databricks came up with this solution in order to boost more the development of the projects. Even before uh, GitHub was part of the Databricks, so we can use uh, the Git integration within there. But as soon as I, as far as I know, there are only there were only two ways that you can do that by using manual Git commands into your notebook, so you can create a new notebook in a Databricks, and using some magic commands there to write some command script lines in into push and pull manually from your uh, from your. Databricks environment because Databricks it uses the storage in the background when it saves all the notebooks and all the configurations, all the files that you need to work on your project. And by using these commands, uh, manual commands, you can link it to the to the to your repository. But also in a notebook, you have uh, there uh, a link that you can uh, do the connection with your Git, which somehow this is a synchronous way of um, updating your um, branches, which is good, but this is not very suitable when working with teams, because uh, whenever you might be working in parallel, two persons from your team can work in parallel in that notebook. Uh, and this might be in conflict as well because of the uh, synchronous way of updating your notebook. So therefore, I think this feature is quite amazing and will help uh, more us into the data science and data engineering work we are going to do. So now, before uh, going to a demo, I'd like to show you a diagram here, which uh, I will uh, I will try to explain in two perspectives this kind of new feature. Into the admin perspective, the role here of the admin is just to create um, a master to create the repository, to create the branches, in order the work should to start, but also to automate the pipeline so you can automate the releases that you are going to do whenever you change something and all the configuration based on the access level. While from the user perspective, you can just clone your environment, you can start a new branch based on the feature. It depends on the approach that you have decided within your team. You can use feature branches to release a new update or a new feature that you want to integrate in your project or you can just uh, use a development branch where you push and pull on that branch. Uh, Databricks also offers a user-friendly interface. You can just push buttons there and everything is maintained by the Git provider. So you don't need to, to do any command Git commands there like push, pull, rebase or, or, or other uh, basic commands of Git. But you can just use these buttons there and this uh, interface to, uh, which makes our life easier for sure. Now we are, uh, we are going to jump into the DevOps to show a bit the environment and the repositories. So here is the environment that we are currently working on. We have divided by folders in order to keep uh, everything clean there uh, into the environment, some standards and conventions there. Uh, in the DevOps, in the repository, you'll see that you have the commits, pushes, branches, pull requests, which will guide you and show you all the his history of the involvement of the project but also by doing the pull request you can merge uh, your modifications or releasing a new feature there so we can just going to clone the notebook you can clone it via ssh but because in database you can run ssh commands but it's easier to do it via https so we go to the databricks environment now and we are going to add this repo so uh, as you can see, by only pas pasting uh, this uh, URL, the database can recognize 
whether this is Azure DevOps or GitHub or Bitbucket. With DevOps, uh, it's a bit more easier to connect because uh, we are within Azure, so the same environment and the connection is more easier. But with to connect with GitHub or Bitbucket, or GitLab or other Git provider there, you can use uh, you have to use some tokens. You can change the repo name. It doesn't mean to be the same as what you have in your repository. This is up to you. Let's create this repo now. Uh, there are, it's important to mention that there are some limitations from Databricks at the moment because it's still in a public review. So there are limitations like no more than 200 notebooks are recommended to have in, in your uh, repository because that will slow down a bit the things or not more than 100 megabyte of notebook data because still it's because it is, it is in a public review. I hope that soon this kind of small problem, let's say, uh, will be fixed from Databricks. So as you can see now, here we have the code. We can navigate through folders to check, but and here you can click and it will show all the branches that are available whenever you can pull or push. So this is the interface, the user-friendly interface that I was talking about before. And yeah, as I said about limitations, this will be a bit slow because we have more than 500 notebooks in our environment. Slow down a bit of things, but yeah. So here you can find the, all the branches. You can change your branch. You can pull and push from that branch. Whenever there is a conflict or something goes wrong, you'll see a pop-up here up the page. So we'll show you whenever there is a merge conflict. So this will not be done unless you solve that merge, uh, that conflict. You can click pull and it will pull all the information uh, from your branch in order to have the most recent code locally from the remote repository you can create a new branch yeah, and you can push and pull by adding some description and summary of your feature that you are developing but let's go to a notebook there while the process is so here you can see the, uh, the message that you will say that the pull is successfully done but let's go to a notebook as i was saying before there was also a chance of to connect the git so i'll give i will show it to you now so as i was showing before there is also a possibility to connect your Git provider with the Databricks, but uh, which we'll show here. So it is a Git not link. If you go to the revision history of the notebook, you'll see also there a button which says Git not link. You can choose your branch or master here uh, by link to your repository. And this will update uh, your notebook to the master branch or branch that you have chosen synchronously. So this was the other opportunity that I uh, mentioned before. But I think that this is uh, more suitable for daily development. So let's stick to that, to this new feature that Databricks uh, has released. So here I'm going to add a new code, which will reflect the changes afterwards in the branch when we will try to merge. So let's assume that this is a new uh, feature that we are going to add. And we are going to write this is a test. So we are under this branch now, and this will, if you click to this branch, this, the process uh, in the background, as I said, it's a Git provider which takes all the responsibilities there. We just click and click, uh, we just click on the buttons there, and every comparison is done automatically from the Git provider and will show the changes in the preview here. So, uh, yeah, uh, we did a uh, an update of the notebook just suppose that this is a new feature and uh, we'll see here the changes that we have done so we just added a new cell and uh, a new line this is a test so we are going to put uh, to add this as we are not going to work in a new feature we are just going to create a new branch it's called test I'm just trying to keep it test test because uh, we need to roll back afterwards. <laughs> so uh, yeah, now we have the uh, the branches created and we can just add the summary. So this test feature. So we can just commit now. We don't need to pull uh, for the moment because we just clone the repository. But if you are continuously working on that, it is always recommended before you start developing uh, something you pull from the main branch, the master or development, it depends what which is your default branch in your uh, repository. So before starting working on that in order to not have conflicts, you need to pull first and uh, then start making the updates. So as you see now, 
uh, you saw the message there that everything uh, went well and now we created a branch and the branch we can see that in a remote git uh, repository now so if you go to branches you'll see that uh, the test branch that we all uh, that we just created and now we suppose that this feature is all finished tested and needs uh, to go to the release so we can release that later in, in the other environments we can just create a pull request because we're going to merge into development you can choose from which branch into which branch you want to do a pull request and merge all the features you can choose a title you can add a more description it always recommended to have uh, to have some description there in order to let your team know about the changes that you have done and also to keep track uh, and be up to date with all the development going into the project you can also add reviewers here you can choose uh, reviewers to to check the code and once this is approved you have the right to the the full merge with your development uh, so also here you can link you can make use of the boards so whenever you have a ticket that is created into your sprint you can link this certain feature or certain uh, update that you have done with a ticket there or a backlog item and uh, may and all and uh, link all the updates to keep everything synchronized in the structure so we create this uh, pool now and automatically we it will manage to uh, to find the conflicts if there is uh, anything so if there is any conflict you'll find them under this page it will show all the conflicts and where you can try to resolve them or uh, choose which kind of version you're gonna keep uh, you're going to keep working on the local version you, that you just committed or on the online version that uh, are, that is uh, currently in your in your main branch you will see here the commits the history that you did in this branch if you did multiple commits uh, in this branch all the updates and the files changed uh, within this branch so you have to wait for someone first to uh, review this code and to approve and once it is approved you can just you can set out a complete or you can complete that while you click complete a new pop a new page will uh, be shown here when you can choose uh, to remove this branch or not or you want to keep working on that so yeah all this uh, is very dynamic very flexible effective to use this feature uh, this was a demo the, the test that we did and to show this feature that is uh, recently released i think this will be really a boost uh, for project development and to help the teams more into their further development of projects to make it easier the collaboration uh, between them but also to keep uh, uh, the project very structured and clean and make it uh, making sure that uh, we use the best practices out there from, uh, from the source control so thank you for watching uh, and uh, i hope you enjoyed uh, this session and feel free to uh, have an, if you have any question please you can write it down in the comment uh, below and we'll try to answer as soon as possible thank you